Here's a question for you guys. When is it okay to pre-order a video game? Is it as soon as the pre-order trailer drops, when the company has an amazing reputation, or when there's a cool pre-order bonus that comes to the game? Wrong! All wrong! You should never pre- Uh, ciao! Questo è GameStop? Mamma mia! Pre-orders! Uh, f*** you! I shouldn't have to make this video, but... It's time we address this properly. 2023 has been one of the most amazing years for AAA games so far, and there's still just under 6 months of games that are yet to come out. But as much as we've seen amazing games, we've also seen the most busted, buggy, and boring games come out from developers both big and small. And I know that pre-orders are not the main reason these games go bust, but I'm not gonna pretend they aren't part of a wider problem. So without further ado, let's get into this shit. In the beginning, there was no Barely Fanatical. Only cavemen, fire, and that annoying sound when you try to connect to the internet and went <laughs> Sorry. Digital games didn't exist. Then, a flash of light. I was born. Mama told me, Only pre-order a game to make sure you can reserve a copy for yourself. I didn't know what she meant. I was six months old. It was only when I tried buying BMX X X X that the cashier told me they were out of stock. And also, that I was severely underage. Back then, pre-ordering a game meant just that. Keeping a physical copy for yourself so that they didn't run out of the game when it released. To incentivize pre-orders, sometimes you got extra goodies and trinkets which were nice little bonuses. Pre-ordering Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts would net you a copy of the original Banjo-Kazooie. Pre-ordering Pokemon Coliseum would give you Jirachi. And I shit you not, pre-ordering The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker for the GameCube gave you a copy of Ocarina of Time. If that deal existed today, I'd be all- Oh! Oh! Oh my god! It's like you pre-ordered a massage at a spa ahead of time and your masseuse turns out to be fucking Sydney Sweeney who happens to ask if you want a happy ending. <laughs> I had a dream like that once. These days, pre-ordering a game feels like trying to book that same massage, but instead Ronnie Coleman shows up, licks his lips, and says, With the advent of digital games and digital consoles, pre-ordering games feels like such a redundant, out-of-date practice. You get shitty bonuses that aren't even great incentives, like in-game currency, extra lives, cosmetic items, and yet, I have no idea why you guys still pre-order games. It's purely based on hype. You're tricked into owning the game beforehand without knowing what state the game is in, and because of that hype, the gaming community is made to look like completely stupid fucking idiots when busted games end up releasing. The funny thing is, I tend to hear arguments justifying a pre-order that goes something a little like this. Dude, this game is so... <laughs> hype! Even if there are issues, after the day one patch, most of these bugs will be fixed. Game of the year. Righteous! Oh bro, it's XYZ company. They never let us down. I'll always bend over for them. <laughs> oh shit. Oh! It's time for a mental exercise. I want you guys to focus on what I'm saying. Let's pretend you're hungry as shit. Pepperoni meat feast combo with extra cheese, stuffed crust, and a side of potato skins and potato wedges. You place the order and you realize you don't have cash on you, but you pay by card. No biggie. The doorbell rings and the delivery guy's here. You open the box and it's half a box of dough with ketchup on it and a note on the inside of the box saying the rest of the pizza will come tomorrow. This is how I feel when you motherfuckers are out here saying, Oh bro, trust the devs! The day one patches gonna fix everything! <laughs> if you look at where No Man's Sky is now, you're probably of the opinion that the game is as amazing as it's ever been, and Hello Games pull off a truly remarkable redemption story. And this is true, but what the fuck, right? I'm paying $60 on release for one of the most anticipated titles ever, and you slapped me in the face with your cock, and just because you said sorry multiple times and gave me content over the years for free, I'm supposed to let this slide and start clapping? It went in my mouth. But it still holds true. Accountability is something that only the Hello Games of the industry will adopt. But for botched releases, like Street Fighter V, Master Chief Collection, Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, you eventually managed to fix things, but why couldn't I have all of that on release? And not holding developers accountable means that others will think they can get away with similar. And for every game that might redeem itself, you'll have another game with a set of fans disappointed because the developer's dick went in their mouth too. Earlier, I showed you Cyberpunk 2077 being the most pre-ordered game of all time. And this is because of the reputation the developers gained after the success of The Witcher 3. It won Game of the Year and even got really good DLC. And the name on everyone's lips was CD Projekt Red, right? Instead, what ended up happening was the most depressing release of a video game I had ever seen for something so widely anticipated. Imagine if that had happened to From Software with Elden Ring, or Nintendo with Tears of the Kingdom. Imagine it happens to Insomniac with Spider-Man 2. I don't know about you guys, but... <sighs> That would make me create an account on Twitter and... No! Not... 
Not Twitter! That's why you never put developers on pedestals. If at any point they feel like they're untouchable and you don't hold them accountable anymore, it just goes to shit. And this has happened before. When was the last time you expected a Sony exclusive to be buggy on release? Days gone still ended up happening. Yes, that's right, John. I mentioned your game. Now go play outside. What about Rockstar? You know what these guys are putting out. How could they ever put a foot wrong? Oh. Okay. Nintendo. Nintendo has never let us down. Remember, all Nintendo games never drop in value because of their reputation and how quality they... Oh no. Now see, despite Capcom going on an absolute roll and putting out consistently fun releases, I'm still not gonna hit pre-order on any of their upcoming games. This is still the company that released Street Fighter V in the state it was in. Do you understand now, my friends? Do you fucking get it? Do you get it? I have to tell you guys a little secret. I know why AAA games still have the pre-order option. Think about it. Digital games never run out of stock, so there's no need to pre-order except in the rare case you want in-game bonuses. They're the same price on release as they are when you have the option to pre-order, and you can still safely pre-order a game after reviews come out. So why do they still give you the option to pre-order months or years ahead of time? Come here guys, I need to show you something. Now, I wish these were jokes, but they're not. Gamers have the most ridiculous, abusive relationships with these companies they're fans of. It is wild. I had a commenter on a previous video state that Starfield and The Elder Scrolls 6 will still sell like the cure for cancer. And you know what? He's right. You guys will deep throat the most complacent developers who continue the cycle even though you haven't played the motherfucking game. Because they know that once that shiny new cinematic trailer comes out, you've got their back. It's like having a crazy ass toxic partner who steps on your balls every chance they get, but the moment an outsider criticizes them, um, excuse me, but why is Days Gone in the thumbnail? It was an absolutely amazing time. Lamal can't spell barely fanatic without brain cells of which you have zero la, 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 la. <sighs> now if you'll excuse me I need to go pre-order armored core Hadouken.